Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, we will be discussing about lumbar puncture. So, the indications of lumbar punctures are meningitis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, multiple sclerosis, and for cytology of the CSF. Then, sandochromia can be seen in conditions like subarachnoid hemorrhage. Then, therapeutic LP is done for conditions like normal pressure hydrocephalus. Now, we will discuss about the contraindications. Contraindications to lumbar puncture are skin infection near the lumbar puncture site, seen as infection causing increased intracranial pressure or some spinal masses are present. Platelet count less than 20,000 is an absolute contraindication and if the platelet is more than 50,000, it is safe for a lumbar puncture. An INR more than or equal to 1.5, administration of unfractionated heparin or low molecular heparin in the last 24 hours, conditions like hemophilia, von Willebrand's disease or other coagulopathies and trauma to the lumbar vertebra. Now we will discuss about the layers pierced during the lumbar puncture. The layers are skin, superficial fascia, supraspinous ligament, interspinous ligament, ligamentum flavum, extradural space, dura mater, subdural space, arachnoid mater and subarachnoid space. Now moving on to the steps of lumbar puncture. Assess the patient for raised intracranial pressure. Assess clinically and laboratory wise and rule out coagulopathy or thrombocytopenia. Get an informed consent from the patient and the bystander if the patient is not conscious. Give some anxiolytics and analgesic to the patient and start him on oxygen. Patient should be properly positioned. If the doctor is a right handed person, uh, place the patient in a left lateral decubitus position. And if the doctor is a left handed person, position the patient in a right lateral decubitus Enter position. sterile techniques. The doctor should wear a mask and cap, carefully wash hands and don properly and wear a sterile gloves. Gather the LP tray. We should have at least two spinal needles of 22 gauge size for adults. Collect betadine or tincture to sterilize the area. So you can see here that is the spinal needle. And for giving local anesthetics, we want local anesthetic 1% uh, lidocaine. With that, we want a 18 gauge needle to draw the anesthetic and 25 gauge needle to inject the anesthetic to the patient. We also want a manometer with a three-way valve to check for the CSF opening pressure. If that is not available, we will be using a IV set. So we have the uh, sample bottles to collect the CSF. We need at least four sample bottles. So we are taking the local anesthetic. And the four sample bottles are also ready. So, carefully cleanse the patient's skin over the desired lumbar puncture area in a circular fashion or in a rectangular fashion. We should cleanse at least three times from center to periphery. After 
cleaning the area three times, we will be putting the whole towel. Again, assess the anatomy of the patient. Palpate the posterior superior iliac spine and palpate the corresponding vertebra. Palpate for the L4, L5 or L5S1. We will be uh, usually puncturing at the L3, L4 or L4, L5. Anesthetize the space starting with a small intradermal blub of lidocaine and advance to the deeper areas drawing back the syringe before injecting the anesthetic. Make sure that we have not injured any vessel while injecting the anesthetic. Then while drawing the needle, keep a gauze there. Insert the spinal needle into the anesthetized space with the stillet in place and the bevel facing the ceiling. Slowly advance, maintaining a horizontal plane with the trajectory slightly cephaloid until a mild resistance is felt as the ligamentum flavor and with a giveaway later on. So we are inserting the LP needle with the bevel facing upwards. We will be directing to the umbilicus. And when we have advanced in, remove the stillet and see if the CSF is flowing or not. If not, replace the stillet and advance 2 mm additionally and check for CSF again. If resistance is felt, bone is likely to be hit. In that case, we draw the needle to the subcutaneous tissue and palpate the landmark again and ensure that you are in the midline and then change the angle a little bit cephaloid and then attempt again. And once CSF is visualized, attach the manometer or the IV set to the spinal needle to measure for the opening pressure. So before measuring the opening pressure, make sure that the patient's lower limbs are extended so that we will get the correct opening pressure. The normal opening pressure is 5 to 17 centimeter of water that is corresponding to the CSF pressure. After checking the opening pressure, we will be collecting the samples. So here you can see in the IV set, the CSF level is slowly increasing. We will be measuring at the point where the CSF uh, flow stops. So, uh, so the height is slowly increasing. If we have any doubt, we can just mark that area and look if the CSF is rising more than that mark or not. Within that time, arrange a glucometer to check the corresponding GRBS and also four tubes should be arranged or CSF sampling uh, containers should be arranged to collect the CSF samples and check the corresponding GRBS while we are taking the samples. This is to compare with the patient's blood glucose and the CSF glucose. So when the level CSF level rises above the marked line and if the CSF level is becoming constant, mark that also and we will be measuring the CSF opening pressure. When the CSF level is constant, we will be removing the IV set and we will be collecting the samples in the sampling bottle. 
and we will be checking the CSF opening pressure with the scale. It will be measured as centimeters. We will be collecting the CSF samples in four tubes. Out of the four sampling bottles, the first and the fourth will be taken for culture and gram stain. The second will be taken for proteins and sugars. And the third will be preserved. While collecting the samples, make sure that you are not aspirating the CSF fluid because it can lead to herniation. Once the CSF is collected, replace the stillet into the spinal needle and remove the spinal needle and apply sterile dressing to the procedure site and keep the patient in supine position. You should not elevate the uh, head of the patient, patient should be kept in the supine position to avoid post spinal headache. Complications of lumbar puncture. Lumbar puncture is associated, most common complication is post lumbar puncture headache. The most common cause is because of the CSF leakage from the lumbar puncture site, because of the traction on the bridging vessels, dura and nerves that is causing the headache. Post lumbar puncture headache is usually, begin, it begins from 24 to 48 hours after the procedure and it is usually located in the frontal or occipital region. It is a pressure like and throbbing headache with variable intensities. It is intensified when the patient is sitting or standing upright or with some valsalva manure like cuffing. The headache improves or resolves when the patient is supine. It is associated with nausea, vomiting and even vertigo and tinnitus. Risk factors for post lumbar puncture headache is using a very large size LP needle that is more than 22 gauge or using a cutting needle like a quinky needle, multiple attempts of puncturing and failure to replace the stillet while withdrawing the needle after the procedure. Most headache resolves with rest and in supine position and while maintaining hydration and headache subside with analgesics and antiemetics. Other complications are local discomfort and spinal hematoma. Some person patients can have severe or persistent backache after the procedure. It might be a radicular pain or a new onset of neurological symptoms or even sphincter dis disturbances can be there because of the spinal hematoma or the irritation to the spinal nerve roots. I hope you have understood. Thank you.